Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for having this hearing, and thank you to our witnesses for joining us today. Um, right now, families across the country are very worried about the epidemic of lung injuries that are associated with e-cigarettes or vaping products that, as the Chairman has said, has struck over 2,000 people, including 14 in Washington State, and claimed 39 lives. My heart goes out to all the victims and their families, and I know all of my colleagues b believe that this is an urgent issue, and we are all very interested in what our witnesses today have to tell us about this crisis and what steps we can take to stop it in its tracks and prevent similar outbreaks in the future. And beyond this new illness, families across the country are also deeply concerned about the continuing uptick in youth e-cigarette use. Again, as the chairman said, the um, latest data is showing us that one in four high school students and one in 10 middle school students are using e-cigarettes. That is a really alarming increase. And it's fueled by companies' efforts to appeal to kids, um, threatens decades of works, and puts a generation of children at risk of nicotine addiction. For years, popular e-cigarette Brands like Juul, the brand we know that most kids use, have appealed to kids through flavors like mint and menthol, creme brulee, and youth-savvy advertising <clears throat> like campaigns with influencer personalities, among other tactics. While co the communities across the country are treating nicotine addiction among kids like a public health crisis, e-cigarette companies have been treating it like a business plan. In fact, Juul reportedly not only knew how addictive and appealing its product would be for kids, but used the addictiveness to market the product to retailers. One Juul pod can have as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes, and many kids do not realize that. This crisis is spiraling out of control, and it requires swift, bold action. For years, President Trump and his team have shown little interest in taking on the tobacco industry because this, uh, behind this epidemic and fighting for our children. His advisor, Kellyanne Conway, recently and wrongly said the FDA has no jurisdiction over vaping and vape shops. Another of President Trump's leading voices on health care policy said he doesn't believe the FDA should even be regulating tobacco products and that the FDA's regulation of tobacco tobacco is, believe it or not, a, quote, huge waste of time. That's not merely alarming. It is dead wrong. But it's not just the Trump administration's words that should make families skeptical. It is putting our children's best interests ahead of tobacco company products and profits. It's the administration's actions. In 2017, the Trump administration delayed FDA oversight of existing e-cigarette products by four years. The decision, which former FDA Commissioner Gottlieb has since admitted was a mistake and a court has since ruled was unlawful, was a victory for companies like Juul, which were able to continue targeting our nation's youth and selling flavored products that appealed to kids. In the years since, the Trump administration decided to hit the snooze button on making sure e-cigarettes meet even the most basic standards. So youth tobacco use has skyrocketed driven by e-cigarette use, which has more than doubled among high school students since 2017 and more than tripled among middle school students. And while the Trump administration's de decision to delay oversight of products already on the market has allowed this crisis to grow, its lackluster enforcement against new products coming to market illegally has allowed it to fester, creating a wild west of vape products that are unregulated, and that can be incredibly dangerous in all sorts of ways, something the current epidemic of vaping-related illness has made all too clear. Between the crisis of rising youth tobacco use and the alarming outbreak of vaping-related illnesses, families are now counting on us to act quickly and keep them safe. Washington State is one of several states that has already taken action by passing an emergency rule to ban flavored e-cigarettes and raising the purchasing age for tobacco to 21. This committee has also advanced legislation to raise the purchasing age to 21 nationally, but while we push for that step, there is still much more that needs to be done, including immediately clearing the market of all flavored e-cigarettes that have not undergone FDA review. 
Unfortunately, despite President Trump's recent promise to clear the market of non-tobacco flavored e-cigarettes nationally, a promise that for the first time seemed to indicate this administration was taking the youth vaping epidemic seriously, reporting now suggests he may be walking away from that proposal altogether or planning to bow to the tobacco industry pressure with a watered down policy that could carve out vape shops and leave menthol a huge category of incredibly popular e-cigarette flavors unaddressed. That would be a massive loophole and absolutely unacceptable. In fact, new data released just last week showed us that youth use of mint and menthol e-cigarettes dramatically increased over the last year alone. We need swift, bold action, not delays and half steps. And that doesn't just go for e-cigarettes, but also for cigar cigars, including kid appealing flavored cigars, cigarettes using menthol cigarettes, and other tobacco products. We need to continue investing in public health programs and preventive measures through CDC. And we need real progress on reducing the levels of nicotine in cigarettes, another policy the Trump administration promised, but I'm gonna keep pushing for. And I'm absolutely going to be pushing President Trump's new nominee to lead the FDA about his plans to fight tobacco use as well. Because our communities, our kids, cannot wait for the Trump administration to get its act together. Back in my home state of Washington, the LaConnor School District recently filed a lawsuit against Juul for its role in the epidemic of youth tobacco use. Meanwhile, students at Jackson High School are encouraging their peers to take a pledge against vaping. And earlier this year, Madison, a young student from Richfield High School, testified in front of our state legislature about her own experience with e-cigarette addiction and encouraged our lawmakers to take action. Leaders and advocates across the country are doing everything they can to respond to this crisis, and they deserve to know that we are doing everything we can too. That's why I will keep pushing for action on e-cigarettes and vaping, and I know there are members on both sides of this aisle that want us to do more on this as well. So I hope we can take what we learned from this hearing and use it to continue to work together in a bipartisan way on common sense steps to keep our kids and our communities safe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.